Welcome back, viewers. In this episode, we'll pick up right where we left off last week. After exploring the stunning temples of Abu Simbel, we'll now head back to Aswan to discover its tranquil gardens and quaint rural life. Good morning, viewers. And I'm going to do a bit of a different video today in Elephantine, uh, which is a little island in the Nile, in the city of Aswan. Got a kind of a bohemian, almost beachy vibe to it. We're gonna walk around a little bit and sort of just see what the locals are doing, um, you know, see what the island's like. Um, I've not really done a video like this before, but I thought it'd be interesting to have essentially no plan and just sort of see what we stumble across. Oh, I'm tired of I'm not believing them. Forty in the shadow. Yeah. The sun, I think, more than I think, I think so too. Yeah, beautiful. Look at this. And this gentleman behind me is just talking to Amy about the temperature here. 42 degrees. Is he saying it's hotter than that? Oh, he's saying he doesn't believe it. He says in the shadow it feels like 40, but in the sun it feels like more. Yeah, it feels like more in the sun for sure. He it's very saying, hot. He was saying there was a fire yesterday in the trees and oh. the wind blew all the ash here. So they've been yeah. cleaning yeah. up probably. All, in the, all the ash came over here. You yeah. think someone like dropped a cigarette or something. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, we've got a wonderful breakfast here. We've got our falafels, um, the cheese. Is it goat's not goat's cheese, it's like yeah, a cream cheese. cheese. Yeah, a very soft cheese. Um, very warm bread. It's very similar to Jordanian breakfast to be honest. They all seem to follow the same sort of pattern. Yeah, they're gonna. I bet they'll bring an omelette in about five seconds. Yeah, they are. Are they actually? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. And a coffee. Um, so yeah, we have a coffee and omelette. Um, the flatbreads that they warm up. Um, some falafel. It's actually a really nice breakfast. It feels quite healthy. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I like all the fresh, fresh yeah. bits. Yeah. So one of the things I was saying before our technology started working for me was that the river of Aswan um, is generally considered the beginning of Egypt. And in ancient Egyptian times, uh, they would orient themselves towards the life-giving uh, Nile, particularly the source of the life-giving Nile in the south. And so for that reason, Aswan sort of considered the starting point of Egypt. So you'll notice we're doing gender segregation on this trip. Oh, I'm the bag. Amy, you go. Salam. So women at the front, men at the back. What I wanted to show you was the difference between Elephantine and uh, the island here that made a lot of the tourists stay at and the more sort of typical streets um, that you get over in Aswan as we were walking towards the unfinished obelisk. One of the things we spoke about was how the roads are typically um, dirt roads, whereas you would expect in the city, it's the same in Cairo, them to be, you know, asphalt or you know, paved over, etc. Also tends to be quite a lot of rubbish around. Um, and a lot of, you know, the houses all have balconies and exposed brickwork, and you get a lot of attention. Um, and we're finding that in the southern areas uh, of Egypt, um, it's become more sort of um, strict Islam, let's say. And uh, so for example, Amy now, if I come forward, has to, has to sometimes roll down her, um, roll down her sleeves because uh, people will actually stare at her arms just as we're sort of walking along and she, you know originally a couple of days you might have seen the video she was wearing shorts where well everyone in Cairo was staring at her and as we got down here people just started to stare at her arms so she rolled down her sleeves and in one of the restaurants as well um, a woman covered Amy's eyes in one of the hotel sorry covered her his Sorry, oh, his wife covered 
his eyes because he looked at Amy's legs <laughs> when she was around the pool. Again, just in short. Um, so a very conservative society down here, more so than the northern parts of Egypt. And something to bear in mind. And yeah, but the hustling continues. <laughs> It does make it uncomfortable. And for example, earlier we had a gentleman giving us directions on the video that we lost, um, which is very kind of him, but they get these, they shine, they shaft you so many times. There's so many tricks up their sleeve that you don't know half the time when they're trying to help you and when they're, um, and when they're trying to get money out of you. So half the time they're like, oh, come this way, come this way, but they're actually just leading you to their taxi. Salam. Um, oh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's have a spin around. So look, beautiful this place is. These are all mango trees. See here, I'm just sort of come off the road. All these beautiful birds and these are all, you know, kind of vegetable patches um, where they're all sort of growing things along here. Um, and again, just endless uh, mango trees. So if we can have a little walk around, I'm sure the farmer won't mind. If we just have a quick look. But it's so luscious. It's beautiful, don't you think, Amy? Mm -hmm. And I just can't believe how many mango trees there are. These are all mango trees. All these trees here. Let's see if we can cut through here. Very humid. <laughs> Very humid. But yeah, a totally different vibe to the centre of Aswan where there's very little greenery. Um, and this, I believe this used to be like a sort of separate uh, town, like it wasn't part of Aswan, but then it's suddenly become absorbed by, um, you know, the jurisdiction of Aswan. Incredibly endearing, this place. It's very twee, I would say. And this is interesting. So these fountains, yeah, we see them everywhere, and I think they're sort of a public drinking fountain. We saw those children when we were staying uh, in Luxor, and they were all taking us around the town on the donkey. They sort of went towards the taps, put their mouths directly over them, all started like drinking from them directly. And I think they offer some kind of filtration, uh, hopefully, or if not, they cool the water down or something like that. Um, but they're absolutely everywhere uh, on all the sort of main streets, especially in these kind of rural areas, I've noticed. Um, but yeah, you can see the mangoes up here. Beautiful. It's probably where they get the mangoes for those drinks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really twee, aren't they? Yeah, Full of character. Nice. And this is something else that you see, and we saw this in uh, Luxor as well, and it sort of, I always think, typifies you know, African seas, and it's these sort of brick, uh, sorry, these mud walls. Um, and if you look closely, you can see bits of, uh, you know, what looks like bits of uh, straw to me. But I think it works because, I think these are literally mud bricks. But I think it works because uh, it doesn't rain very often. And that's another thing about Aswan, it gets very little rain, unsurprisingly. Um, so presumably this is all a result of clever irrigation and wouldn't be surprising if it, you know, dated back to sort of Egyptian times. Look at that for camera work. Got the mango. God no, someone's over the wall like, what the hell? <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone just sees a camera just pop over their garden fence. Oh, then we've got the mandatory donkey in all of these countries. Over there, you see a donkey. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it, it's got. There's a vibrancy to it, to this area with the all, it, this uh, colourful, the colourful patterns you get on these buildings. And we noticed yesterday that they they paint some of the trees. Um, but yeah, it's lovely and it's so peaceful compared to uh, Aswan. So I know, I don't, so yeah, I mean, I thought maybe this is a bit of a tourist place, like it's built like this for the tourists, but I don't actually think so. I think it's just, I think this really has its own character and by association of that, the tourists come here. 
it's not just one of those places that's got character artificially or superficially for you know the tourist benefit but when you compare it to some of the scenes i showed you earlier of you know aswan city they're worlds apart much more peaceful over here. Yeah. Look at these beautiful paintings on the side of buildings. Hello. Hello. And you get just get these little glimpses of the river through the gaps in the building, um, which I'll show you in a moment. It just gives it that little bit more character. I was going to show you them, but there's a lot of children running around their underpants. Yeah. Uh, and just as I was telling you, these little glimpses of the river down there, like you can see uh, just down there as you sort of walk along the buildings and you've been like, what the hell's happened to the footage? Well, <laughs> I'm back onto the phone because I've just got an, another GoPro warning light saying camera is too hot, um, turning on. And so it's just automatically turning itself off. Um, just goes to show you how hot it is that the cameras, the GoPro as well, I mean, they're meant to be durable. It's, uh, you know, turning itself off every five minutes. Yeah, difficult vlogging conditions <laughs> again. Um, and up here, there are sheep in the alleyways. Interesting place. So look, we're gonna head up to Moven Pick now to get some lunch, uh, maybe a couple of drinks. And uh, yeah, on the way back, I'll do some more filming. So we just had lunch in the Moven Pick. Um, I, didn't really, I didn't record it because to be honest, it's pretty, uneventful, it wasn't particularly interesting. We were inside, food was pretty average. Um, what I did want to share with you, which is interesting, was yesterday when we were in the other local place, which is a much better restaurant, and views of the water and whatnot, one of the blokes who was serving us, the uh, waiter, walks down towards the water's edge <laughs> and just jumps in fully clothed and uh, start swimming around and then this happens look at that <laughs> wow <laughs> i've never seen that before the gopro is dead that's the nile <laughs> that's the nile but i mean he's been doing it the whole time and look these ones have water coming out the back of them like all these boats, that's the ferry down there. There's oil slicks coming out. Yeah, absolutely mental. He's drinking water out of the Nile. And what I found so interesting about this was, um, when I was reading about whether or not I could swim in the Nile when I was at the other hotel, you may remember I said in one of the clips, like, oh, maybe we should go for a swim. Well, I looked it up just in case, like, you know, is the water clean, blah, blah. Turns out that one of the tourists, um, that popped up for Aswan uh, said that she got what's called schistosomiasis, which is also known as snail fever. I'd heard about this, but I hadn't really read about it, and it's absolutely terrifying. Um, oh, you've been stopped. What's going on up there? He in here. Just go down there and round. He's getting the key. He's getting. He doesn't want me to go around. Um. So yeah, and I'll read to you what the uh, symptoms are. So it's a, also known as snail disease caused by a parasitic flatworm called schistosomes. The urinary tract and intestines may be infected. Symptoms include abdominal pain, diarrhea, bloody stool, blood in urine. Those who have been infected for a long time may experience liver damage, kidney failure, infertil infertility, or bladder cancer. Um, I mean, how insane is that? And, and, uh, thank you, sir. And what's even more uh, shocking about this is they reckon that between four and a half thousand and 200,000 people um, die of it each year, uh, and that 700 million people live within uh, risk areas. So, how it works is people who have the uh, worm inside them pass the eggs into the water when they defecate or urinate in it um, and then it's, if it could, it's like something out of a horror story you couldn't make it up 
the eggs pass into a snail uh, where they multiply. I think this is right. Yeah. Multiply inside the snails. The parasite leaves the snail and enters the water where it can survive for 48 hours. Schizosoma parasites that can penetrate the skin of persons who are swimming, bathing, or washing in contaminated water. I mean, it's insane. Um, and so a lot of children are quite badly affected because they play in water. And that's something that we've seen quite a lot in the Nile. The way that they get inside you, these worms, is through your skin. And I think I have read somewhere that if you're drinking it, it actually passes through your lips. I'm not a doctor, so you know, please look into this yourself. So yeah, don't swim in the water, people. In, in other news, it's now 43 degrees. <laughs> it is just boiling hot. Okay, one more schistosomiasis fact, just one, just one. And that is that um, Egyptologists have found evidence of it within the ancient Egyptians, um, within mummies as old as 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000 years old. Um, and I always think that's really interesting because similar to Tutankhamun, they can tell all sorts of things about the ailments uh, of these pharaohs from their mummified remains. It goes to show what it does if you actually mummify someone in terms of preserving their body. Oh, we're going to go up there. Oh, there we go. Amy on navigation duties here. Seven minutes away. It is a shame about the rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hello. Hello. Oh. Oh, she's on the phone. Oh, she's on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's awkward. We, always... we said hello to her because she said hello, but she was actually just answering the phone. <laughs> they say hello when they answer the phone, which is really confusing. <laughs> you fully waved at her as well. I know, I waved at her. <laughs> Bit embarrassing, really. Where were we? Where you both mocked me? You and the waiter. Oh yeah, we were in the restaurant the other day. And wait, what did oh, you? Yeah. What happened? Oh, he said enjoy your meal, and you said you too. Yeah, and you both started laughing at me. <laughs> I got I got ripped into by an Egyptian waiter and Amy simultaneously. <laughs> I was like, all right, guys. Like, how embarrassing! This happen it happens to everyone. <laughs> the waiter's like, yeah, so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Greg always gets mocked. He got mocked um, by a five-year-old. Five-year-old. When was that? <laughs> oh. Greg, Greg laughed. And the boy mimicked. No, no, no. no. You're not setting the scene. <laughs> we were we were drinking tea with Bedouin, right, in the middle of the desert, and there were like, I don't know, maybe eight children, very small children, and four women. Um, and I was telling a story, and I went, ha ha ha, and then the kid went, ha ha ha. <laughs> And then the whole a whole group of Bedouin and all the kids started laughing at me. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> Including Amy, yeah. She was loving it. We should be coming on to the street. More mango trees. Hi, I'm sort of wondering if Sub-Saharan Africa is a bit like this. It is nice. I don't know why I'm such a scrumper. But I just told Amy, if you see a mango, grab one. Unless these ones are meant to be green. I'm a kleptomaniac when it comes to fruit. Mm. Is that the right word? I don't know. I think so. You don't eat it for three weeks. I've got uncontrollable theft issues when it comes to... Did you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I don't eat it for three weeks. Very good. The famous lime that I... The travel lime. The famous lime that I carried around the entirety of Jordan <laughs> from the lime farmer. Did you end up eating that? Oh, yeah, we, we did. We had it on hummus. No, we only had half. <sighs> so I carried it around the whole country for nothing. Good to know. Why we didn't use it, we just kept forgetting. This is a lime I've accidentally been carrying around in my bag for the last two weeks <laughs> that we pilfered from that uh, farm. Is pilfered the right word? I'm not sure. Stole? Stole's a big word, isn't it? <laughs> it took. Stole's a big word. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think these little gardens are so charming. This one's pretty. It's so nice, isn't it? I wonder what they're growing. I'm too stupid to know. This is water. Yeah, this is water. I didn't realise when I did that thing about this. This is drinking water. Hello. Hello. 
That's also for a drink. Yeah, this for a drink, yeah, yeah. No, no, together, yeah. This is like, like a conditioning. So this is safe to drink? Yeah, yeah. No, no, also it's good. Yeah. Yeah. But this is good with people. People like to drink this. Yeah. A little cold. And this good cold. Ah. It's very cold. Yeah. It's ah, good. very cold. Make, uh, water like uh, fresh. Ah. Not cold, yeah. Is it, does it clean the water? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Ah, awesome. Now, thank you, sir. Shukran. <laughs> See, you do get your good apples. He was lovely after I turned the camera off. I didn't want to point it in his face. He was saying, if you want to have a mango, have one. Um, he literally Nobody said, cares. he said, no one cares if you want to grab a mango. I'm not bloody surprised. They're everywhere. Now is the question of how do we get a mango? What are these? I mean, I think if we're offered free mango, we have to take what are it. Those? Over there? No. I don't know, but that's a papaya down there. Let's go have a look. The other thing he said is, uh, feel free to walk around. Like he said, walk around, no one cares. So we're not going to tread on their crops, but we're going to have a little gander. This is a papaya, isn't it, Amy? Yeah, but they're not right. No, no, I'm not going to touch them, I'm just saying. Let's explore. Deepest Aswan. Before the camera explodes with heat. It's incredibly fun to wander around here and just explore. Here they've got eggplant or aubergine, depending on which English country you're from. So I see my mangoes, do you? Oh, I see my mangoes. Amy, yeah. I see mangoes. It's a bit hard on a skirt. <laughs> I'm getting all these on me. You bit. <laughs> I'm a bit sweaty. You're a bit sweaty there. Why? Can you, what, <laughs> You're glistening. <laughs> right, what do you think? These ones or these ones? I think these ones look riper. I think I can see a yellow one. So you might have to follow me with the camera. Make this quick before it dies though. Before it overheats again. This is where we get chased. Some guy said, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Mm -hmm. This is where we get chased off with a pitchfork. <sighs> Don't chum this plant. This is, is this mint? I don't know. I'm not sure. The problem is I'm not experienced or knowledgeable with plants. It's actually an area we want to improve, isn't it, Amy? Yeah. Um, that has my name on it. It also has snakes written on it. I might just have to wait here. Looks a bit muddy. Which one looks the best? This one? I think the one... Make noise to get rid of snakes. We know that much. Yeah. This one here? Yeah. Oh. oh, it smells amazing. Just take one. Yeah, if it's rock hard, then just take one. It's literally juicing. Have a look here. Right. It's literally coming out the top. Mm -hmm. Now what do I do with it? <laughs> How do I hide it? I don't think you need to. Someone's going to think I've been nicking all their bloody fruit, though. Doing that Can I lick the top, do you think? No, I don't think I think I should wait. It's slightly yellow, so presumably this will ripen. Maybe by the time we get to Australia, by the time it gets to Australia, it'll be perfect. <laughs> uh, I think it a, a, a bloke who looked about a thousand years old ushered us out, mango in hand. I was like, he said it was okay, but obviously they speak zero English. So yeah, we've just uh, walked into his farm and now appear to be Stealing from him. <laughs> oh well. We went to hold him. We're great ambassadors for our countries, aren't we, Amy? Great ambassadors. If you come to Egypt, if you come to Aswan, come here. Mm. Come here. This is the best bit of Aswan we've seen. So, back at King Jamaica now. I'd highly recommend coming here rather than Move and Pick. There's better food. And much better atmosphere. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. The only difference is Mervyn Pick does alcohol. Yeah, Mervyn Pick does alcohol. But what do you need alcohol for? But Be healthy, have a fresh mango. Yeah. That's why we're here. We look at the mangoes after I, after I, this Stop. time, uh, Stop. didn't steal. This time was given a mango. <laughs> I felt it was only appropriate to have a mango juice. Yeah. I reckon they're from these mangoes. 
Sure, sure. Should we ask it? Come here, get the juices, and you don't need any alcohol because they're fantastic. They're fantastic. Who needs alcohol anyway? Be healthy, live longer. So here we go. Is it field to farm or far, farm to table or field, field, for field to farm to table? No, I think it's farm to table, farm to plate, something like that. You can tell we're not going to many gourmet restaurants on our trip at the moment. Anyway. Man how about this? Mango tree to mango smoothie. <laughs> it's actually got chunks of mango in it. You can see. Can you see? Yeah, you can see down the side. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, so good. Oh, look at the bottom. Oh, it's so Unbelievable. I feel like Anthony Bourdain now. I should do like an like a as well. I can't do it. I was going to say, it's like the best mango you've had to drink. I don't think that sounds as good as you think it is. <laughs> the best mango you've had put into a drink. Yeah, you can get yeah. some dodgy mangoes, but think of like the best mango you've ever had. Yeah, okay. Not English people. Do you like it then? But they haven't had many good mangoes. Oh, Amy's got this whole thing about how we in the UK don't know mangoes. And I like watermelon more than mango. I'm a watermelon person. I caused a lot of problems in her family when I said that. I was like, watermelon is way better than mango. Like everyone in her Australian family, or her family are Australian, was like, are you nuts? So, yeah. It's just me, apparently. Don't have that I debate with the Scots. What the hell's he doing over there? <laughs> he's watering his mud. Oh, I thought he was doing something else. <laughs> Can I say, he's, he's drank a lot. <laughs> Bloody hell, he's really... He needs to lay off the pints. Anyway, now that we're down to, down to the potty humour, it's probably time to end this vlog. But yeah, I hope that was, that was a slightly different vlog today. Not done one like this before, where we just sort of wander around and shoot the shit and have a general chat about the things that we're experiencing and seeing. So yeah, thank you for joining us, and uh, thank you for watching as always, viewers. And we'll catch you on the flip-flop tomorrow. Onwards. On, on, onwards. You've stolen my whole thing. It, that started naturally, and now you've just nicked it. You gotta get there faster. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Here he goes again. Oh, you bottled it. Oh, you bottled it. You bottled oh. it. Oh. Oh, damn it. What? I'd love to jump in, but my but it just looks so refreshing. Mm -hmm. But I would do it on the other side, because here are all the boats. And on the other mm -hmm. side is there's no boats. But unfortunately... There's no way to tell. But knowledge is power. And I don't want to get that long list of problems. I don't want to get rashes. Either. I don't want rashes. We'll swim in Australia where there's no rashes. Yeah. Oh, damn it. What am I doing here? I've already said goodbye. Ah. Like and subscribe. Ha, ha, ha.